Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly q and where you ask me questions, and aloha starts to bother me right at the start of the recording. Hey, buddy. Hey. Look at him. Look at how fat he is. See? Hello. Hey. Hey, there's food in your bowl. Hey. He is so upset right now. But, oh, and there's cat number two. It's a party in here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm glad, glad they waited until I started. There you go. Now he wants nothing to do with me, Humphrey. And she wants everything to do with it. Hey, hey, you're part, you're part of this too. Hey, 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 hey. I'm gonna knock stuff over if you're not careful. Hey, 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 hey. I almost knocked something over. Hey, hey. hey. Don't worry, it's fine. See? And there's he, there he is in the back. Look at this, this isn't even a Q&A anymore. I might as well just record videos of my cats just doing this every day because this is what they do every day. All right, Ivy, time's up. Go down. Come on, you can do it. Go down. And and I answer questions, by the way. Um, it's been a pretty interesting week. I've got uh, I've gotten some stuff back on track that uh, I haven't really been doing as of late in terms of video creation. Uh, a couple things coming out, one, an Elden Ring shield build video, and another one is going to be um, probably a look at the special site. I'll probably just record that real quick, even right after this. Um, I also want to do a piece on what we've learned so far from PvP. We'll have patch notes this Friday. We'll have another Stay of the Realm. We have the weekly Q&A, and I'm even working on a Final Fantasy ranking video. They're going to rank all the mainstream, all the main numbered Final Fantasies, and a couple of the side ones as well. Uh, and that is currently in the works. I've got some audio recorded for some of that footage for most of those things. I just need to put it all together. So getting back into the swing of things to 6.1 around the corner. And of course, for patch 6.1, we're going to have all of the usual trappings that we have here on the channel. Anyway, with that, let's get into the actual Q&A. Thank you to our sponsors over on Patreon for supporting. They don't have to. All my content's free here on YouTube. And as long as you're here, enjoy it. But, you know, they support a little extra. So they get a little shout out right here. Also, our patrons of Darkness, Kujakos, Andronova, and Kernai Oni. Thank you for going above and beyond. And with that, let's get to the questions. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hello. Hi. Hope you're doing well. Same to you. Just have a tiny question regarding optimization opportunities. Classes like Barn and Monk can be said they have a lot of optimization available in terms of buff alignment. Ugh. RNG factors and way in which they approach fights can be seen as dynamic. Man, I can tell you right now, when I'm a bard, if you tell me I need to move my songs or my buff windows or anything, it's it's painful because you can't move the songs very well. You just move the buttons that you press to activate your buffs. It's awful. Dancer is far more flexible when it comes to stuff like that. Bard, it is agonizing to have to delay buffs until close to the time that you would normally be activating ballad. 30 seconds a minute. Oh, oh, it's terrible. With uh, regards to Reaper, what optimization opportunities could there be outside of just timings? I mean, I'd say every job's optimization is really down to timings. And sometimes delaying the buff makes the most sense given the mechanics, but feels terrible and can sometimes lead to burst windows just not being used as well without very, very specific practice. Reaper is really down to double or triple um, of their burst windows. Uh, man, it's been so long since I've actually talked about it. Um, whatever they're called, they're... Uh, their gauge, the gauge that fills up. They, they gotta get a, they gotta get a double or a triple of those inside of buffs, and that can be very, very difficult to do. Uh, not even just from uh, a timing perspective, but from a, a forethought perspective, from an actual execution perspective. It's it's quite uh, quite intense. So I would say while they don't have very many low things, also I mean the same kind of goes. Arcane Circle I'd say is more flexible than um, honestly both Monk and Bard. I, Mung and Bard weren't great examples for this question because moving things on those jobs is terrible. I mean, Monk really needs to be able to hit their two minutes when they hit their two minutes because they don't have a lot of time to mess around with the potential of overcapping perfect balance. And Bard just loses DPS if they have to delay even just a little too much. So um, if anything, Reaper probably has it a little easier. They just have to contemplate their gauge so that they can go into their uh, go into their super fast attacks when uh, when they really need to, and they can move Arcane Circle. So, I mean, that, that, would, that would honestly be it. It's just moving Arcane Circle. Hashtag Mondays with Monday. Just one with Mr. Happy. Hello, Mr. Happy. Two quick ones for you. All right, let's get it. I mentioned houses always being at their base price now. What are these prices for different size plots? That should be on the Lodestone. I've never shown any interest in buying a house. I have no idea what the costs are. I think it used to be like... 
Oh no, but then they changed. I, yeah, I couldn't even list the the standard prices. They've been over it a couple times though. So in either one of the live letters or on the lodestone, um, it's gonna have all of those uh, all of those listed. Especially in the big housing breakdown, I think it's probably gonna be there. And what are some materials craftables you would recommend stocking up on either yourself just to making a, make a ton of gill? Any anything that makes a any sort of housing uh, item, any sort of furniture, anything that can be put in a house or outside of a house. Those are just always money. Like even now, even before the a bunch of people are going to get access to new houses. I mean, those are just always good money. Um, that could be some of the rarer things, like uh, you know what you. I, I don't know if they still do it the same. It used to be like dungeon drops that you could get, and you'd like just go open the chest real quick and craft a few of those. Or it could just be something that uh, you don't see a lot of on the market board, but it's a kind of a nice looking piece of furniture. But yeah, just anything that goes into furniture, and that's almost every craft has things that they can make into into furniture of some kind hashtag mondays with mr happy all the mondays hi happy hi hope things are good yeah they are question about the live letter job balance announcement why are people upset or disappointed in sam getting guaranteed crits i've seen comments about how this makes them less viable as dance partner and in team synergy overall i'm guessing i miss why crits aren't wanted when they're guaranteed but wanted when they're random so Crit is a very awkward stat, and I actually kind of want to make a standalone video explaining this because you're far from the only person who's asked me this question. So critical hit rate as a statistic on your sheet, when it's on gear, when it's on materia, that specific value determines not only your critical hit rate, but your critical hit damage. So this is, I'm going to expand on everything. So when, when critical hits are guaranteed, the critical hit rate stat actually goes up in value because now it's improving your RNG on the non-guaranteed hits and the damage when they do hit. And it's also increasing the damage on your critical hits that are guaranteed. It's why Warrior wants them, even though the majority of their damage comes from guaranteed critical hits. Direct hit doesn't have the same advantage, but that's not what we're talking about here. That's what people think of and they think, oh, that sounds really good. When people talk about team synergy, however, when you have a guaranteed chance to crit on your hardest hitting skills, every raid buff that increases critical hit rate is much less valuable on you because it does not increase the value on the character sheet. It is simply a percentage increase to the frequency with which critical hits hit. So every person who can guarantee a crit doesn't benefit from those buffs. So dance partner, the specifically devilment does not guarantee, um, does not get as much benefit as it used to. You would get more benefit giving it to somebody who hits about the same DPS values as you, but doesn't have guaranteed crits because they're gonna be able to benefit from everything. Now, I think Dance Partner is not the best example because it does have direct hit, it does have just flat damage increase from the dance partner itself. So um, there are other elements of it that are still incredibly beneficial. If a samurai is your top DPS, you wouldn't want to not dance partner them, especially if they're the top DPS by a wide margin, because anything that's not a guaranteed crit, at the very least during Devilment, they will still be able to benefit from. It's just not all their hardest hitting skills, which is kind of upsetting. But the big thing is when you look at things like having a Dragoon in the party, having a Scholar in the party, um, any job that has guaranteed crits doesn't benefit from buffs like Chain Stratagem or debuffs like Chain Stratagem or buffs like Litany. So it hurts the overall synergy with the rest of the jobs. Um, there's a whole lot of issues with the way that crits and direct hits work in this game and ways that it messes with synergies that I don't think the developers are really considering all that much. They just see, oh, this feels good when I'm playing it and not how it feels to the players when they're actually working together as a team and trying to optimize it. So it, realistically, there's something a very small portion of players actually feel the effect of or even notice the effect of. And the majority of casual to mid-core players don't care. They do just want the job to be fun to play. They want the endorphin hits and they're not concerned about, you know, whether or not they're getting the critical hit rate buff from some of the other jobs. But I do think it's disjointed design, and I'm, I don't know, some things are just really weird about job balance this expansion. This is definitely among them. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hi, Haps. Hope you're having a good Monday so far. I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> My question is about getting folks onto State of the Realm. I know in the past you've answered a question about this, about how it's a struggle for you. Sometimes contact people directly, so I wanted to ask about that. The Final Fantasy content creator community has exploded over the past year, and there's tons of folks I'd love to see on State of the Realm. Some big ones who've transitioned over from other games haven't made a lot of connections yet, some small ones, but yeah, awesome content beneath the radar in a lot of ways. Is there anything we as fans can do as creators to help them help see them on your show? No. Um, realistically, it is down to a lot of personal issues with me, but also making sure that I, uh, I have the right show to actually bring people on. There are people who I've considered for shows, 
that I either um, have to organize the show so last minute, it's almost disrespectful for me to try to get people on. It's like, oh yeah, in two days we're doing the show, by the way, we've, we've worked it out. Can you want to get on? So it needs to be considered further in advance. So a better planning stage would help with that. And that unfortunately with the way things have gone for me in the past several months has not been consistent enough. So there's really nothing anyone can do. Um, anyone who we are considering for a show, we've probably scouted out and we've probably considered at some point. And it's either come down to not remembering to ask them to be on the show or my insecurities in asking people to be on the show. Um, and there are dozens of people when it comes to that. Fortunately, Sly, much more personable than me, he's really good at reaching out to new people and getting them on for the show. And he's been taking a much more uh, front seat, a much, uh, much more direct front seat when it comes to doing that, as you may have seen with some of our more recent shows. So he's really kind of like the heart and soul that's keeping everything together right now, because um, there are weeks where it's just tough for me. You know, I've talked about it a little bit here um, in the various weekly Q and A's and my channel update video, but I, it's just another thing that's added on and it's just tough for me. So no, there's, there's nothing you can do. It's, it's all on me and me getting over what I'm dealing with. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hi, Mr. Happy. Hi, how are you? I'm a little tired, but you know, it's fine. I had some salmon for lunch. It was good. Hope you and your mom are doing well. Thank you. I was just curious how you decided your stream schedule in terms of days, hours. So there it actually is a uh, a story for that. So when I first started, streamer culture was very much be live as much as possible. You know, taking a day off wasn't really much of a thing anyone considered because everyone was trying to break into it. And it was really a lot more about frequency than quality. Um, so that was how that kind of got started on that path. What eventually happened is uh, I made that schedule and I stuck with it. It was it was 10 a.m. Eastern to um, 5 p.m. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. And then I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, but I wanted to keep that time slot. So I moved it back three hours, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, it means I wake up early. It means I start really early. And I kind of like it that way. Not that I haven't thought about changing it. I thought for a while about splitting up a morning stream and an evening stream. But I found that for my personal taste, the idea of stopping for the day, eating, you know, going to the gym, whatever, coming back and then working again, wasn't attractive as kind of like a day-to-day -day schedule. You know, at least when I do 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. for my live stream, I then can wrap up to all the things I was planning on doing anyway, and then I can do YouTube work if I have anything that needs to get done, as opposed to committing to going live. I also thought about the realistically what my YouTube productivity would look like with something like a split schedule, and I didn't like it either, just for just for my own personal fit. So that it's really all it is. I just wanted a nice early morning to mid afternoon time slot. And then I just shifted it back three hours when I moved to the West Coast. As for any quality of life changes the game still needs do that transmog system needs to be reworked. <laughs> Our clam system needs to be reworked. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hello and a good evening, Happy. Hope you're doing well. It's not quite evening yet here, but it will be soon, so same to you. Quick question for you this week. Aside from just more MSQ and 6.1 in the new PvP mode, what are you most excited to do? The 24 man is is big at the top, but the real, real big thing for me is indeed Dragon Song's reprise. Um, I just I'm hankering for an ultimate. And I will say this: my prog experiences with Ultimate have been trying in the past uh ukab i only filled for a group for a few days and i didn't go back till way later honestly it wasn't that wasn't really a bad experience i just wish i had a static for it from day one um Uwu was a great experience and really is my pinnacle of of comparisons when it comes to my uh my ultimate progression but t was a was a disaster it, i would say it was a disaster for the first few days it was fine but then there started to be some tensions rising because people were learning slower than other people and then one person was removed from the group. And then the next day, two other members got into a fight and one of them just didn't show up after that. So we had two subs that were trying to come in in the middle of our, you know, week two prog. Then we basically made no progress the whole week. We were on the final phase right at the start of the week. And we got nowhere from like Sunday to, to Friday or Saturday. So then our one of our tanks left because he's like, you know what, guys, it's it's been a time, but... We literally haven't done anything in six days. Like we haven't, we've barely, we've, we've only gotten back to the same, like the, the beta phase at the end twice in five days. I, I'm not going to keep devoting my time to this because I don't think everyone's like in it enough. And after that, I left. I was like, you know what? At this point, the group needs to be completely reformed. I'm just going to step away from ultimate. And then it was like a month later, a friend of mine went, hey, uh, we need a fill. Uh, can you come on range? I was like, well, I mean, I haven't cleared it yet. And he's like, oh. 
well, how far have you been? I was like, I've been to the beta phase at the end. He goes, oh, so you finished the fight. Yeah, just come on in here. And that's when I ended up getting my clear. So I don't want any experiences like one in three. I want an experience like two. And so I'm a little nervous because it's been a while since I've done an ultimate or at least done an ultimate from absolutely nothing like it was with T. And uh, I just want it to go well and fun and difficult and other adjectives not used properly in an English sentence. Quick lightning round question thrown in. Somebody asked me what my favorite like studium or crystalline mean quest was. I honestly haven't even done them all. I just, it's crafting. I just don't craft or gather very much. So even though the story I did, I think I did a little bit of the mining story and one of, I think the goldsmithing story, which I forget exactly where those fall for crystalline. I've done any for the studium. So I can't answer that question. So just wanted to throw that in there. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hi, happy. Hi. How do you feel about the new changes? The same crit change. Oh yeah, I guess I kind of already touched upon this. Um, it's funny that we, I figured we'd probably have two comments, something about Samurai, but I figured it would be more about the removal of Kaiten. And yeah, I mean, I kind of already touched upon this, the issues with making things auto crit or auto direct hit. Um, even though it kind of fixes RNG, it also comes with other downsides. And on top of that, you could argue the thing they're arguing for Samurai, like, oh, to prevent DPS disparity or, you know, a wide range of uh, DPS pull to pull. I mean, every job wants that. Dancer wants that with technical step and standard step, you know, but they're not getting auto crits. So it was just, I don't know. It was, it was just, it was really weird. Um, the crit bis is not any worse than it was before. That crit bis is now even more valuable. Um, but raid buffs, of course, like I mentioned earlier, become the problem. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of expressed my answer already. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Howdy. Hello. Hi. I've been watching you and quite a few other 14 YouTubers and streamers. Glad to hear it. And love your Stay of the Realm podcast. Thank you. My question is a tad more different. Okay. I'm curious as a streamer, YouTuber, how do you get, uh, how do you go about, yeah, as I've, I've done the A space out a million times before, so I've done that. How do you go about networking for collaborations and such? I stream 14 and some other games when I'm lost and it comes out of properly network. I don't, so first of all, just having the courage to do it in the first place is the big thing, which is why I'm terrible at it. Again, I always feel like, Oh, you know, they're, they're busy. They're doing something. You know, I don't want to intrude. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to bother them. I, I do that all the time. And people look at me and be like, happy, you're you. Why would you be like that? And it's like, yeah, but I'm not me in like a sense of like 10 years ago, me, like 10 years ago, me would be like, yeah, I'm me. Yeah. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah. I'm me. Now I'm like, dude, you got to be a little more humble. He's just like, yeah, you're you, but like, what are you, what are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the, that's the conversation I have myself in the mirror. You know, gotta keep, gotta keep that ego down. That that like that like late teens, early twenties. Like I'm invincible ego. That shit needs to get pushed down. I'm in my thirties now, dude. I get winded walking up the goddamn stairs. So, the biggest thing is to not be me. <laughs> it's to not be like me. You have to have the courage to initially ask people. But I would say there is an art of understanding what content you're producing versus what you are asking somebody else to participate in. So for example, I do tons of podcasts with people where I look at the history. I see they've been doing it for a while. I don't, and that's it. And then I just think about the guests. Do I, I mean, the host is like, do I know the host? You know, do I know this show? And from there, I kind of, I kind of make the judgment call myself. But if somebody who I've never met before, somebody who I, I don't really know the content they make. I don't really know what they want me to do. And they just ask me to like randomly do something. It's that's a major toss up because I'm not really I'm not really understanding the dynamic that's being presented, I suppose. Um, it's a, again, it's very difficult to explain, but you kind of get a feel for it over time, especially when, you know, you, you uh, you've been doing what I do for as long as I have done it. Uh, but there's really no proper way. It's always awkward, especially because a lot of us are either socially awkward or socially inept or introverted or stuff. It just makes it 10 times more difficult, but I'm definitely not the best person to give you advice on that, but that's some perspective from me. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. No, hello. You know, I forgot we had, we had people who didn't say hello because we were on such a good roll up until now. Fine, whatever. A lot of classes have been changed to fit the mold of two minute burst windows, but Black Mage remains the outlier. So the only, well, that's not entirely true. They did get some slightly more controllable two minute burst window uh, in the most recent expansion. So I, 
I don't entirely agree with that sentiment, but I under I kind of understand what you're saying because you do need to pretty properly time your your fire window going into a two minute on top of a couple of extra buttons that you have nowadays. Making it into all kinds of right, ley lines is the only personal two minute. Isn't um, what's the what's the other skill, man? It's been here. Black Mage Job Guide, Final Fantasy 14. That's this should take me to the official one on the website. And I'm gonna go down because there should be a couple of things in here. Um, Mana font's two minutes. Mana font is an offensive cooldown. I hope people understand. That's an extra fire four and an extra despair, uh, which you should be getting under buffs whenever you're using that. Um, you're right in that ley lines is there. Sharp cast is something you're just always managing. Um, triple cast every 60 seconds. So as a two, it does fit into a two minute buff window, assuming you don't need it for movement, which is you know down to a fight to fight, uh, a fight to fight. D uh, observation you need to make you should be going in with two xenoglossies also and amplifier is once every two minutes amplifier is a two minute buff you know it guarantees at least one xenoglossy if you had to use them for movement earlier inside of a buff window so what i'd say is they're not traditional buffs for buff windows it's not oh i do more damage for 10 seconds it's okay i can force myself to get more powerful spells out during the buff window that everybody else is is activating all of their stuff so i don't really agree with your assessment that Black Mage doesn't fit into that two minute paradigm. They do, but they don't just press a button and they're on. They they really have to flow into their two minutes in order for it to uh, feel and perform properly. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hey, Haps. Hey, hello. How's it going? Two questions. Doing good. And you got it. In regards to your channel update video, have you considered a second channel for variety gaming so it doesn't mess with the algorithm of your currently established 14 channel? I don't really like the idea of a second channel. Um, I have considered it, but for me, it's no matter what, all the content you're making is content relevant. It's the same kind of content you would normally be making anyway. So I understand that the way that, that YouTube's algorithm works, it does actually... Not, yeah, I'll say harm. It, it does actually kind of harm your channel to do things that are not within the established norms. But that's only if you're really posting content on your channel that, how do I describe this? If you're not regularly posting. So like in the past few months when I haven't been posting and then I post something that's not the norm, that hurts my algorithm. But if I'm already posting like 14, this 14 video and this Final Fantasy video and that Final Fantasy video and this and that, then me posting a random Elden Ring video or a Mario Party compilation doesn't really negatively impact it in any meaningful way. Um, and then the, the hassle of getting enough views, enough subscribers on a secondary channel to monetize it and then having to manage those two things separately. Hey, listen, plenty of people do it, but I, I think the reason for it is slightly conflated. Um, I think having another channel for like my Twitch VODs would make a lot of sense. I wouldn't want to upload those onto my just normal YouTube channel, but that's a different headache in itself because of the way that I actually handle my YouTube content production. The answer is not no, but the answer is also, I don't actually think it would be worth it for me to do that as opposed to reaching into my current subscriber base to produce something new and see if they're interested in it in the first place. Um, what could be a feasible thing to do is to do A and then try to transfer said content type over to channel B and then use that to drive traffic to the second channel and then the second channel goes. Um, there are other ways I could go about it. Um, I'd say, I actually know someone who, <laughs> Aloha. Which of my cats is doing that? Aloha. You're a menace. Both of my cats are just being loud right now. Liz, why do I have cats though? Anyway, um, where was I going? If you want to make a channel dedicated to only one topic, I'd say that's when it's smarter to do it. Like, let's say I had a Final Fantasy 14 channel and then only an Elden Ring channel and then only a Kingdom Hearts channel. It makes more sense to do that than to do a channel dedicated to one thing and then do a variety channel because the variety channel out the gate is at a massive disadvantage with the algorithm. And do I want to make a channel for every individual type of game, a Pokemon channel, a, a, you know, like how deep down that rabbit hole do I really want to go? And the answer is, you know what? Maybe I do. Maybe I should go down that rabbit hole. Maybe I should just do it so I'm stop, I stop being nervous about posting videos about topics I really enjoy. And at any given day, I could just upload something to a channel. It might be worth it 
the heck? On that merit alone, my hey, my Gmail store, my Gmail store, just seventy nine percent full. Hey, at least it's not sixty nine percent full. Um, so yeah, you know what? The answer the answer is not a no, but it's not something I'm considering at this moment. Um, as for the second question you have here, I found that with both Bard and Summoner, wow, you really just you you moved right into that second point. Uh, I found that with both Bard and Summoner losing their dot management, less so for Bard, but damage is so low, it's not a rewarding portion of their gameplay. Hey, it's not insignificant. It's just not, you know, the majority anymore. Uh, and as no such job in the game fits my niche, I have no personal class enjoyment anymore in the game's roster. My question being as follows, what have you found that helps you reconcile time slumps in the game when it comes to class enjoyment? I always just, I, I, I don't know. I just look for the way it flows. I don't think too much about the gameplay fantasy as much as how the job itself actually feels like i love bard's constant juggle of its skills right now and the detracted dot management but i do also believe something like you know a warlock and world of warcraft affliction lock should exist that the dot management is the core gameplay aspect and i would like to see that return reaper i really like the way that its burst windows flow machinist always gets that dopamine hit whenever i land those auto direct crits or whenever I go into a burst window and I execute it flawlessly. And I look for things like that. I look for those moments of dopamine hits instead of thinking too deeply about the actual job fantasy or the gameplay fantasy that is being achieved. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Hey, Haps, hope all is well. Hello and same to you. How effective do you think the stat squish has turned out? I guess, so actually, how effective has the stat squish turned out? I think they didn't go hard enough. I think they needed to stat squish more. In terms of the way the game is balanced and the way it feels to play it, no different, which is exactly what a stat squish should achieve. But they're gonna have to squish again at this rate, like really soon. Like, I don't even know if next expansion it's gonna go, it's gonna be at a point where it's still low enough to not squish it. I think they I think they didn't pull the trigger on bringing the numbers down enough and that they should probably bring the numbers down again, uh, again next expansion and then bring them down more than they did the first time. That's the big thing that I think. As for actual crit, has ever started out this high at the start of an expansion? It started off pretty high in, in Shadowbringers, but that was a little job dependent. I'd say this is probably the point crit has started off the strongest in any expansion. But then again, I also think back to like A Realm Reborn in Heaven's Ward. We didn't really understand. It, it, well, it didn't have the crit damage aspect all the way back then, but I don't think we really understood the substats as well as we do now, so I don't think I can answer that definitively. But I'm gonna say, yeah, it's probably the most egregious it's ever been. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Mr. Happy, you look nice without the headphones. I didn't even realize I didn't wear headphones last week. <laughs> Normally why I keep the headphones on is because I wear them all day up to this point, and then I have that indent in the top of my head that you can see, and that's from wearing the headset. Uh, I think last week I brushed my hair right before instead of just doing that, and I guess that's, that's just how, I, how it turned out. I want to know what your build was in Elden Ring and how long did it take you to finish the game? So my first playthrough was a dex playthrough. I started with my Uchi Gatana. Eventually, I found my way to the Knight Rider's Flail, and then I used the uh, Claws, the, the what's it called, the Raptor Claws, and I went into, like, jump attacks and stuff like that. That's pretty much the whole game, up until I got a certain Katana much later in the game. Not a bloody Katana, one that was a little more... Its owner was more rotten. If you understand where I'm going with that, uh, this is I am the blade of Redacted. And uh, it took me 72 hours to finish the game. I beat every major boss, and I beat the majority of the overworld bosses as well. I'm sure there are some that I missed. Uh, the only things I really didn't do were some of the quest lines that I had locked myself out of by the time, you know, I had realized that they existed. You know, just the nature of playing a game like that. You don't, you don't know you need to have this quest done by X time or Y time, etc., etc. And, uh... Also, and like some of the like random dungeons, like the graves and the catacombs, like I didn't discover those the first time through. So yeah, 72 hours to do pretty much everything. And I only really started looking up where things were right before the final boss, like what would be deemed as the final mandatory boss. And that's when I saw, okay, I have this and that, and I should probably go do those things. And uh, yeah, I was super satisfied, but I've now beaten the game like four, five, six times. Through. I don't even know anymore. And I'm working on another one potentially this coming week, although I might I might verge away from that for a game called Coromon, which is like, it's like a $15 Pokemon-esque game, but it looks really good. I saw my buddy Eric's playing it, and uh, I really like the way that it looks, so I might just give that a shot. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. Howdy, Mr. Happy. How you doing? I'm doing I. You doing I? I'm doing I. My question is a bit of a lore question. Zodiac was summoned to pretty much save what was left of the Asians and kind of reset their society to back before the end of days at the cost of half the population. 
That's not why he was summoned. That obviously didn't happen. No. Zodiac basically just summoned the Sundering happened, then he was in prison. Did he actually do anything? Okay, I don't, so I'm going to tell you this. You weren't paying enough attention to what Zodiac was actually summoned to do. Zodiac was, and I quote, summoned to rewrite the laws of nature. Basically, he was able to completely manipulate the space around the planet to do whatever they needed him to do. And in this particular case, it was to prevent the end of days. Now, they could have done other things with it, but that was the primary reason that he was summoned. And as long as he existed, even in an imprisoned state, that change was being maintained, which is why when he is defeated, the end of days actually begins, because that was his sole purpose. So, yeah, that's explained pretty explicitly throughout the previous expansions, as well as the start of Endwalker. So, he was the... If we beat him and then he just went back to being imprisoned, then the rest of Endwalker doesn't happen unless he's actually killed by somebody. Um, and that is a pretty major, uh, he, that's pretty majorly important, if I may say so myself. Hashtag Mondays with Mr. Happy. I think we're getting close to the end of the questions because I'm starting to see like no hashtags. And we all actually, you know what? I can also see from scrolling, like the actual scroll wheel on the side of the page. Uh, so yeah, we probably just have a couple more. Good day from Down Under. Hello? And hello from America. I, we don't have a fancy uh, place. Yeah, there we go. In the live letters leading up to Endwalker's launch, OCP revealed that the tombstone cost for weapons would be reduced going forward, citing that the data suggests the average player played at least a few classes concurrently um, at any one throughout a raid tier. My question is, what are your opinion on taking this further and reducing the cost of the Savage Raid token exchanges? Given the fact that bad RNG rolls, it could take up to eight weeks to get a chest piece, leg piece, or Savage weapon. Would not make sense to reduce the token cost. I think you could maybe maybe argue that for the weapon because there's one weapon for every job that kind of falls apart once you actually get to referring to the other pieces um the weapon is the one thing they reduced for tombstone cost they didn't reduce any of the armor pieces and that's because the armor pieces aren't just used on one job they could be used on three four even five jobs depending on if it's an accessory you know for like a strength job or something like that um, five. Well, no, even then, because then there's ninja. So, you know, still four, but, you know, I was thinking five melees. Whatever, you understand my point. Um, and so the only way you can make the argument that makes sense is to reduce the number of tokens the weapon in particular costs. Now, I don't think there's really any issue with that. Like, there's no reason that they couldn't do it. Because if it takes you four or five weeks to beat the tier for the first time anyway, uh, and then it takes you another four or five weeks of clearing it to get the weapon, then you're, kind of, you're on pace to where you would have been if you had cleared week one, and then it took you eight weeks to get the weapon. So yeah, I think specifically for the weapon, I would have no objections to this. It, it follows all the same reasons why they, you would reduce the tombstone cost for the weapons, but everything else, probably not. I have a feeling that maybe they might look at readjusting things for like the melees in particular, because melees have, you know, like three different armor sets amongst them just within that one role. But for the other ones, I don't think you could argue that in an efficient enough manner. All right, so I was so wrong about there not being that many questions left, and we're, you know, getting on like 35-ish minutes into the video, thanks to my cats at the start. So we're going to lightning round the rest of them and uh, give it a shot. There's a bunch of people commenting on, oh, they've done April Fool's jokes before. Why wouldn't they do one this year? Well, because it's in the middle of a live letter. They've never, like, premiered a live letter with an April Fool's joke when, you know, we're right on the on the cusp of a new expansion and i like what they did they just showed all the old april fool's jokes it just wasn't it just a post on twitter would have been one thing but to people were like expecting them to go into the live letter and instantly prank people and it's like no that was that was not gonna happen and if it had happened that probably wouldn't have been a good idea so it's like i understand like i know they've done april guys do you really think i don't know that they've done April Fool's jokes in the past after all these years of me been reporting on this stuff. Come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, DRU. Or, okay, so then let's get into the actual questions. Yeah, somebody recognized Phil's barbecue over in California. I'm glad somebody else knows all about that. Um, let's see. Then a few other just comments here. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's a thumbnail. You know, I try to make the thumbnails for this deliberately, like, embarrassing. Like, I just look at the three images and I go, that one's the worst. And then I can't. <laughs> And I go with that one. Uh, there's some people talk about this guy. Uh, you know, he's got the Phil's Barbecue one there. Uh, Pax South was in San Antonio. Uh, was, because as he said, is no longer continuing. Here we go. Here's some questions. Um, uh, for Dragon Songs Reprise, DRU or DSW? Well, it should be DSR, because it's not Dragon Song War. No, it's the Dragon, Dragon Songs Reprise. That being said, Dragon Songs Reprise Ultimate Drew. 
I just want to be able to call it Drew. I think that sounds better. So I'm going with that. Uh, community question here. Um, the PF tank strike on Crystal Data Center. No. No, I haven't heard anything that's happening over on Crystal. I, I almost never hear about what's happening over on Crystal. Because I don't know anyone who's, who knows anything about what's going on on Crystal. So no. No, I, I didn't, didn't know about that. Um, I don't, uh, I've never seen anything happen anywhere else in the game. I've never heard of something like this before happening anywhere else ever. So this is weird. <laughs> what is this for? The don't do the TDD strat for intemp. Wait a minute. Wait. Impossible find groups are willing to do the very easy. So, oh wait, so are their tanks striking because they don't want to take the damage down? Hell yeah to those tanks. I'm going to encourage those tanks. Stop letting uh, stop letting the seven other people dictate that you got to take the damage down because they're bad at the game. Nah, hell no, tanks. Crystal tanks, if you, if you are not doing it for that reason, I'm on your side, okay? As far as I'm concerned, just do the damn mechanic, party finder. Stop being lazy. You ain't going to clear ultimate if you're approaching the game like that. It's not going to work out. Uh, then we had another one here. Um, uh, any advice you can give to progging ultimates on release? Cook food ahead. Don't eat poorly. Don't just drink sodas. Have waters. Maybe some sort of you know something with caffeine in it. You know, like I drink black coffee, for example. Don't don't go crazy with like sugars and 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 sodium things with high sodium. You got, healthy. You got to stay healthy during the initial release. You got to sleep well. You got to take care of yourself. Probably the least talked about thing when it comes to prepping for a major raid tier. You got to take care of yourself. So that's 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 just, that's the big thing. Um, also, make sure the seven other people are like-minded and like gold because then if you start taking too long, if you don't move it at the right pace or people are too serious and people aren't serious enough, the mix match of, of personalities can get uh, more severe in terms of uh, people not getting along and things falling apart. I know that from experience. Uh, got a Stranger of Paradise two-parter. Um, how many advanced expert jobs are unique to it? Man, I have to... All of the concepts are pretty uh, similar to other Final Fantasy games, but the actual names aren't really used across a lot of them. And some of them are just kind of advanced identities for something that as has always been possible. I wouldn't say they're that unique other than the secret 28th one that you've, you've mentioned here. Um, so you know, yeah, just the name. Some of the names are unique, but that's about it. What are your favorite jobs? Weapons, the fist weapons, the weapons are so insanely good. Um, and then for that reason, tyrant was a big favorite, but I eventually moved over to breaker because the Zantetsukin from breaker was insanely good. And uh, I can't imagine giving that up. So those are some ones that pop up off the top of my head. I uh, had one here uh, regarding button bloat on certain jobs available upon execution of others. You foresee an issue with them simply making those actions change into their follow-ups. An issue? Um, I don't see an issue with them making, you know, multiple buttons, converging them into one button for some actions. Uh, you know, Astro is a great example because I say that draw and play should be the same button as well as their minor arcana, the draw and play for that should also just be one button, not two different buttons. So I think they need to with some skills and then other skills they could with other skills, but there are some skills where I think they, they, it might be going a little too far if they were to converge everything. So it almost looked like the PVP hot bars. I don't think I want to go down that far but there are definitely things that they need to consider combining that they don't uh, amongst the jobs I've named and others as well. Uh, let's see. What are you most looking forward to? Like in life? I'm still waiting on this Backstreet Boys concert, Mel, and I want to go to in San Francisco because they had to push it back because of the pandemic. I'm still waiting on that, so I'm looking forward to that. Did you love or hate Elden Ring? Oh, it's the, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. I, Bloodborne is probably still my favorite, but I'd argue the heck is this i'd argue that um what's it called oh okay sorry my phone just gave me a bill pop up and i was like bill bill for what oh never mind no that's that is a bill that needs to get paid um yeah no elden ring is <laughs> probably the best one i have to say uh then we have another one here if yoshida wanted to troll the community and swap summoner animations with pokemon what <laughs> what five pokemon would you pick I don't know. Dude, there's like 900 Pokemon. You want me to pick five? I don't know. Just make Lucario one of them. He's a favorite. I don't, one of them could be Lucario. Other four, bro, I have no idea. I, I can't even begin to, to process that question. 
Uh, let's see. My question is about food and pots. Found a video explaining stat food busted. Right? Trying to understand what he means by capping stats. Oh, so um, guy compared two different foods. Said the lower tier would be better because the top tier, uh, better than the top tier based on situation. Something about losing usage of that specific stat. Oh, so um, there's there could be a couple of meanings to this. So you do not actually gain uh, a benefit from stats every single point that stats go up. It increases in increments. So for example, every like 10 or 11 crit rate, you might gain like, you know, 0.01 of uh, of a percentage. Now like point like 0.1% crit rate, but that might not be reflected in your actual gaining of of uh, of it on like on like a spreadsheet or something like that. So basically every stat is broken up into tiers where, you know, if you have any point that is greater than or less than a certain tier, essentially there are wasted points that you could have. So let's say having 2000 crit rate, I'm just gonna throw a random number out. Let's say having 2000 crit rate gave you 30% crit and having 1989 gave you 29.9% crit. So those 11 points in between are completely useless. Uh, so you have to consider if using something that would get you, let, let's let's say you then had a food that would get you to 19, you know, 1,990 crit, and you had another food that would get you to 1,999 crit, those foods both achieve the same thing because you're not going up in a tier. Uh, and so if the other food, the one that just gets you to 1990, would then also increase the tier of, let's say, determination, like the other stat that it gives, then you'd want to use the food that looks worse even though it is, you know, technically a worse food because it puts you at the right points within the substat tiers. This is something I really wouldn't worry about. It doesn't matter. Like, nobody cares. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's factually how the game works, but nobody cares. That's the truth. Like, Final Fantasy XIV is a game that is so not... It just doesn't hinge on things like this to the point where anyone other than people who are sticklers for details... And just really like that min max that that element that really doesn't exist much in 14 they're the only people who are going to care if you just want to use the best food because it's the best food and it's the food everyone recommends and you know but then somebody comes along and they're like well actually you know you're not actually gaining your 0.1 percent crit tier between these two foods but this other one will give you a 0.1 percent determination are you really going to look at that and be like Okay, because then as soon as the values change, like, do you have like this, this library, this encyclopedia of numbers tucked away in the back of your head? So every time your gear stats fluctuate, or do you want to look up an, a calculator every single, most people don't give a shit. All right. I would say you don't have to care, but factually that is what the person is explaining. There are also diminishing returns. Like if you have too much of a stat, you hit diminishing returns, but we really haven't had to deal with that in a very long time. Uh, that can still occur on like a job to job basis with certain substats. But again, it's just not something that most people really consider all that much. Only skill speed tiers matter. So that's the only thing I would realistically pay attention to. Uh, then we had this one with Blue Mage proving that caster can tank. Blue Mage tank sucks. Not that it sucks to like it performance wise. It sucks to do. So I would not want to use Blue Mage as an example of Caster being a tank. Because if they made an actual tank that plays like the other jobs play like Blue Mage, I would never, ever tank on that freaking job. Um, that being said, can future jobs mix and match identities? Yeah, you could have a magic focused tank and I don't mean like Dark Knight or Paladin. I mean like literally sitting there like Geomancer covering its body in stone in order to like take a hit or something like that. You know, you could, there's no reason it's their game. They can do whatever they want, but what it won't do is be like a caster that is both a casting DPS and a tank. It's going to pick one role and stick to that one role. I'd also like to point out the whole melee healer thing is never going to happen in Final Fantasy XIV. They will never make it so a healer needs to be in melee range to be operational because of how strict the movement and positioning is in Final Fantasy XIV. Bro, people don't even want to melee DPS sometimes because it can get crowded around the boss. You throw a healer in there that's also forced to be in melee range... Bro, people are going to lose their minds. Nobody really wants to do that. So um, I have a strong feeling you'll never see it. And they'd still have to make them function at range anyway, because sometimes there's no boss to be in melee range of. So that's one thing I want to definitely touch on. 
On your last State of the Realm with the VTubers, Lucy pointed out that Blue Mage being a limited job was an incredibly disliked design decision, which I agree with. Do you think limited jobs are worth it? We can see what how little they can actually do, how little time. Again, I think it depends on your stance on the limited job. Like, I, when I'm playing Blue Mage, I'm enjoying it. It's just I won't be bringing it into, like, modern content because it's not designed for that. Um... That being said, if they decided tomorrow, hey, you know, we're going to completely rework Blue Mage and make it into a traditional job and it's not going to be anything like it was before, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. A lot of people wanted that. You know what I mean? So I don't think they'll do any more limited jobs. I'll tell you that right now. That being said, I don't necessarily think the limited job idea was a failure, but I don't think they thought it all the way through either. There were just perceptions of it that they... they it's kind of like PvP. They started on the wrong foot because they did kind of the bare minimum to get it in the door. And then it doesn't matter if you even make the right changes or add interesting content for it later. You've already established this initial impression and it's forever tainted. That's the biggest mistake I think that they made with Blue Mage. Um, hey, quick question. Love your Mario Party. Chance we could get highlights or full VODs of it on YouTube. Yeah, that kind of falls into the posting VODs to YouTube thing. There's a problem with that only because I do sometimes directly upload from Twitch to YouTube. Um, just like right after a major event or like in the middle of Raid Prog if I want to like post where we are in a fight or like we just kill the fight. And if I set it up in a different way, I actually can't do that anymore, which makes it really hard to stay up to date. So... The answer is they are on Twitch as VODs, but that's not really a great format for it. So I need to consider other options to make it like less of a pain. Uh, let's see some pets for kids. Thanks you all for the amazing content. Thank you. Love 14 been raiding with the static. Also a chance to raid with coil. Uh, Black Mage was the main. Feel like the job is like, oh my goodness, there's so much text here. Uh, the condo challenge is I feel like most jobs have a ton of, uh, have a ton of buttons. There are quite some buttons on some jobs, not all the buttons. Uh, not all the jobs I feel like compensated even to there's so much text here and it's all one giant block. I got to find the question. Um, let's see. Do you think Square Enix will ever make a simple button for jobs like allowing your combo to be one button? People have suspected this for a long time. I don't think they will. Uh, me not thinking it doesn't matter because they could choose to do it at any point. And it wouldn't be surprising to see them do it. But even then, a lot of jobs do not work with this. This does not solve the issue of button bloat for the majority of jobs. It makes sense for jobs like Dragoon, where they have two five-part combos that are always the same after they hit a certain level. It makes sense for, you know, Warrior, where, you know, you could have a Storm's Eye one, and you could have, like, a Storm's Path one, and those could be the only two buttons, and it takes it from four buttons down to two. But it doesn't make sense for, like, Black Mages doesn't get any easier if they do that, unless they literally want to put the entire rotation on one button. Oh, you're at zero MP? Well, Despair transforms into Blizzard 3, and no, now that you're in Blizzard 3, I bet you want to cast Blizzard 4, right? Oh, maybe you want to cast Thunder... That's the only way, and that's not a good design. It's kind of the same with Summoner, but Summoner nowadays, that's, you know, maybe it would actually work with Summoner, because that is kind of how they already work at the moment. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. That wouldn't work for every job, so it wouldn't really solve the overarching issue. It would only maybe solve it for a couple. Um, let's see. Hello there. You know you said it in Obi-Wan's voice. Well, I did, because I saw the word Obi-Wan first. Uh, decent amount of text. This isn't that much text. Next time we do Final Fantasy Countable, you'll be uploading each playthrough to YouTube. So we started doing that last time, but kind of like what I was just talking about before, I found that just uploading, mass uploading my playthroughs to YouTube was not a good idea. So the answer is if I do, it would be truncated. It would be more like a highlight reel than anything else. Um, or it would need to be uh, on a separate channel altogether. So I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to say yes because of the reasons I've kind of discussed this uh, this entire show. Uh, and then I had one here, listening to Stay of the Realm. Lori know about the bloodline of Emmett Selk. What's your thoughts on us running into the other children of Emmett? I don't know if... Does Emmett have... Um, I don't even know if we know of any other direct bloodline descendants of, of Emmett. I mean, I'm sure there are. But, I mean, maybe. That's that's an element that we could always explore sometime in the future. I think this is the last one that I haven't answered for the lightning round. And this lightning round was not lightning at all. This was, like, this was a fucking, like, slowest hurricane imaginable run. Um, somebody said new fresh start in 7.0. Um, so, at this point, what if they prestige every 90 class set everyone back to level 1 with a cap of being... No. No. Don't do that. Don't 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 try to get fancy with the leveling system by prestiging people and making you go from 90 back down to level one and then the new expansions level 50. No, that's just as problematic. That doesn't solve anything. If anything, that's even more confusing for people. So no, that's that's going to be a, that's going to be a big nope from me on that idea, dog. 
Uh, crazy, we've not gotten any information about the relic and exploration zones. Well, we don't know if there's an exploration zone. And we do know that the uh, upgradable equipment is coming in 6.2x at some point. That's the weapon. So that's what we're going to be expecting for that. Anyway, that's going to be it for the lightning round. And that's going to be it for the video. Thank you for asking your questions for this week's Q&A. If you have any for next week, be sure to put it in the comment section of the video below. And keep an eye out for some content hitting the YubTub channel this week. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.